Hi everybody, Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in this week's Weekly Insight video, I wanna talk about the five ways that a resilience leader can help convince an executive or a business leader that just doesn't wanna buy in to their business continuity and crisis management program. So I'm gonna give you five ways to think through this challenge, um, but I think it's crucial that for organizational resilience leaders, you go into this in a uh, professional but candid tone, um, utilizing your in-depth knowledge of business continuity and crisis management um, to effectively communicate this to somebody who may not understand all of the things that are involved in business continuity and crisis management and certainly won't understand the lingo. So it's important that you're able to advocate for these using clear language, not a bunch of acronyms or as I like to say, the business continuity rocket science. Uh, and you want to align your message to the executive's priorities and the strategic objectives of the organization. And in doing so, you can more effectively advocate for the importance of your resilience program uh, and the crisis management capabilities and the business continuity capabilities to that executive. So the first one is something you've heard me talk about many times before, and that is that you have to align with the strategic business goals and objectives of the organization. You need to be able to show how the resilience program aligns with and supports the broader business goals of your organization, um, the objectives of your organization. That might include demonstrating things like how does business continuity planning contribute to operational stability and how it helps mitigate risk, how it improves customer satisfaction if that's applicable, how it improves regulatory compliance if that's applicable. Um, and these are often key concerns for executives. If you think about some of the leading risks right now, cybersecurity, for example, or geopolitical risk that we've talked about more recently, well, business continuity and crisis management planning help alleviate those risks. Uh, number two is leveraging regulatory and industry standards. It's here you can highlight the importance of complying with these standards and any regulatory or statutory requirements related to business continuity and crisis management. You can talk about how non-compliance can result in legal ramifications, fines, or damage to the organization's reputation. I would encourage you not to make this the main focus of your argument because then you're making a compliance argument versus a commitment argument. Yes, at the end of the day, you have to comply with regulations. They get you in a lot of trouble if you don't, but it shouldn't be the crux of your argument. You'll get better buy-in talking about how the resilience program supports the organization's strategic goals and objectives. Number three is highlighting the risk and the return analysis, I think is the best way to put it. But I would start with a compelling presentation of the risks and potential impacts of the organization that are tailored to the specific concerns of this executive. I would use data and case studies to illustrate how similar organizations have faced disruptions and the consequences of being unprepared if those risks were to become reality. That approach appeals to the businesses, to the executives rather, sense of responsibility for their area and the broader organization and the potential financial and reputational impacts on the company. Number four is demonstrating a return on investment. And yes, that is not necessarily something, you, a connection you can always make in terms of a positive ROI, but you can frame the business continuity and crisis management program in terms of the return the company receives on this. You can illustrate how that investment in resilience can lead to cost savings, to efficiency improvement, to protection of your team and your assets in the short and long term. And you can emphasize how these programs can help enhance the organization's competitive advantage over brand reputation. One specific example of this, in my previous life, I worked at a Fortune 30 retailer, and during Hurricane Sandy, one of the most compelling slides that I've ever made in my career came about from a conversation I had with my peers at other retailers. And the question I posed to them was, would you be willing to give me the reopening rates for your stores impacted by Hurricane Sandy? I don't care where, I don't need the specific operational details, but I wanna know that today you were, you know, of the 300 stores impacted, that all of them were closed, and tomorrow 80% were open, and two days from now, 90% was open. And the day after that, 95 was open. And four days later, it was 100% open. I want to know that information. And if you would do that, I'll give you ours. And so we all agreed to trade this info. 
Well, what I learned from that is that my company, under my leadership and my team's efforts, had reopened much more quickly than our closest competitors. And by taking that data over to our business intelligence team, we pretty quickly found out that was a pretty significant sales lift because we got the stores open more quickly than our competitors because you couldn't go to them. Now that that data was estimated, and but it came from the BI team that was responsible for such things. And it became one of the most powerful ways to explain the return on investment the organization gained by investing in business continuity and crisis management. Number five is engaging that executive through personalized scenarios and simulations or exercises. And I would encourage you to create personalized scenarios or exercises or simulations that directly relate to the executive's domain of responsibility. When you can engage them in realistic crisis exercises or engage their team in realistic crisis exercises, you can help them understand the tangible benefits of a well-structured crisis management plan or business continuity plans. And that experiential learning can be a powerful tool to change perception within your organization and encourage buy-in. These are five tactics I've used successfully throughout my career when I was in-house building and leading a business continuity and crisis management program, and then things that I do today as a consultant. I hope this helps give you some ideas about how you can do this inside of your organization. That's it for this week's video. We'll be back next week with another new episode of our weekly insights. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.